Hi there, it's Paulie here. Wee! So, uh, as I might have told you, I was very much involved with setting up um, Furry Fandom in its initial phase. Uh, and in fact, as you can see by the art on the walls. Um, yeah, back when it was movers and shakers and people who actually kind of made art and so on. However, at its original genesis, Furry Fandom um, artwork largely came from underground comics. So these are things like um, Fritz the Cat and Vaughn Baudet's artwork and so on. Very kind of, um, what do you call it, kind of 70s, kind of free love, um, screw the police, let's take drugs kind of culture. A lot of that was kind of inculcated through that early artwork, which manifested in the art shows where... People would kind of, yes, there'd be kind of weird, uh, weird sexy art, weird sex art, uh, nudes, all this sort of stuff was just you know, absolutely part and parcel of it. And it was seen as an entirely adult alternative comic fandom. So like, no, no one policed this at all. It was just like, um, you knew um, this was the kind of thing you were going to. Yeah, you, you, you were going to see um, this kind of thing. Wahoo. But uh, yeah, I did have a... Um, I had a, a literary agent at the time, and um, he was a um, <sighs> waste of time and space, really. He had a terribly appropriate wife, however. She was very nice, a long, tall, thin thing who was always beautifully dressed and beautifully spoken. Uh, so I came to a convention in Anaheim, and <laughs> it was just, oh my god, um, the, um, the convention was stuffed full of artwork, uh, and it was, it was magnificent, but the agent decides he's going to come and meet me. That would be a supportive thing to do, he decided. Mm, yeah, okay. So um, he and the wife turn up. So he decides he will go looking for me because he's seen a thing on the program that says I'm like doing a panel at the time. Okay. Uh, she, however, has heard that, that these furry um, panels and so on for artwork are actually incredibly famous. There's a lot of incredibly famous alternative comic art um, artists up there. Um, so, okay, you know, this is the who's who of the black and white comics industry right here, right now. So she goes to the art show. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I'm finishing my panel and the agent walks in. It's like, oh, hi, um, what are you doing here? So, oh, uh, yeah, we decided um, rather than just meet you tomorrow, we'll, uh, we, th we thought we'd come down and uh, see the con. We? We? Um, you brought Carol? Where's Carol? So, oh, she thought she'd go to the art show. Like, Alone? Oh, my God. <laughs> You've got to stop her. <laughs> so yes i sped down uh racing to the art show and uh, no too late uh i caught her coming out and she's like still long and tall and um she's nodding politely to people as she walks by frozen smile on her face thousand yards there and sees me come to one hello i have questions i was like there are no answers <laughs> what can i say <laughs> there's, there's stuff in those um those art shows that could strip your retinal uh, cones and rods right out of your eye sockets. But, oi, um, <laughs> the guy who organises those, or organised those shows, he still runs the art show for things like San Diego Comic Con. Um, he still does them. I love him. He's uh, the husband of a really good friend. But he set up one of these shows. And for some reason... Someone has put in a life-size portrait. A life-size portrait of Mr. Sulu from Star Trek. This life-size portrait of Mr. Sulu is Mr. Sulu, stark bollock naked, who's been tied to some sort of giant pillar, and he's being lashed by the cruel whips of, you know, incredibly muscular um, aliens in um, wearing nothing but butt thongs. And Mr. Sulu has about a 12-inch erection on him. <laughs> and I saw this like... Glenn, really? We're not putting this in a separate section? Oh, well, we've got an adults-only warning on that section of the uh, art show. <laughs> okay, whatever. Oh, so we come out, and a random fanboy goes past, and um, <laughs> nods to the art show coordinator, Glenn, and just, oh, so what did he think of it? <laughs> Glenn says, what? Um, George, what did George think of it? Says, what did George think of it? Yeah, yeah, the piece in there. What, what did George Decay think of it? Says, what, what do you mean, what did George Decay think of it? Oh, George Decay's turned up at the convention. He headed down to the art show. <laughs> My poor friend Glenn just drains white. Ah! 
<laughs> we we hear down there to see what we can do. It's like, mm -mm. Uh, from inside the art show, you hear a rich and fruity voice say, Oh my. <laughs> and his other official comment was, I wish. But <laughs> I think he bought it. I, I think he put a bid on it, actually. <laughs> oh my God. So, yes, these people have no sense of taste to decorum, but uh, it was okay. <laughs> It's occasionally pretty damn funny. <laughs> oh God! As someone said, it's, just, it's the uh, one of the artists who's gone in there. Is it bad? What? The artist? Always oh, the artist? Like, hmm. We're speaking of a being never before encountered in over three hundreds of eight worlds. <laughs> a creature that gestates inside a living human host. <laughs> And has concentrated acid for blood. <laughs> like, yeah, there's some pretty uh, rich and eclectic characters doing that. Um, oh my god, it got to the uh, it got to the parody stage. Actually, I did a comic book series called Tank Vixens, which was a piss take of the entire furry and anime industries. A joke very few people got, and they in fact just bought it. Cause, hey, it's got girls in it. Yes, it has. <laughs> Yes, it has. Uh, a friend drew a giant... Oh, he spray-painted a giant... Uh, it was a... Um, Duna, a, a quilt car, with a naked girl on it, and put it in a um, in a show under the title She's Scotchguarded. Uh, yes, uh, they didn't They didn't even get it when we started to just entirely take the piss. So, uh, yes. Um, uh, an interesting art community. It um, seems to have gone into strange places these days but uh, yeah for a while there <laughs> boy it provided some fun anyway cheers